Inha. Inha. A lot of inhas. A lot of. Um, what, do, what do they mean? What, is fresh, what do those words mean? Fresh and clean, mostly. But the inha makes it like a yummy. Yummy, yummy. like. Yeah. Avon's success depends on women selling an intimate product to customers who are also friends. In Brazil, they don't have a sales force, they have an army. 1.5 million reps in Brazil alone. 1.5 million women selling Avon cosmetics? Women and men. Almost 1% of the Brazilian population is in an Avon rep. Every woman, every man, they don't have access to the Chanel's of the world. Mm -hmm. So what happens is from a taste-making perspective, the Brazilian market is kind of an island where local players have sort of shaped the way that Brazil smells. Trends that are very pervasive in New York, very pervasive in Europe, don't necessarily translate here. So when we brief a fragrance house, an international perfumer that's developing something for Avon, he has to take into account Brazil, interpret the trend from a Brazilian perspective. And if you don't do well here, if you're an Avon fragrance that's not doing so well here, are you likely to get knocked off the list? Because if you don't do well here, Absolutely, you're out. absolutely. Some of Avon's scents are manufactured locally by fragrance company Givardin. They believe in total immersion and have bought French perfumer Thierry Bessard to live here and permanently adjust his nose. Looks nice, but very strong. Very natural. It's a bit creamy as well. Quite interesting. I think that would be very good in a masculine or feminine fragrance. I, uh, I came here for six months and it's been 15 years now. <laughs> to me as a perfumer, it's fantastic to work in a country where all the people love fragrances, you know. Okay, it's called Everest. Everest. Okay, so that's probably why it smells so fresh. Here it's very important that the fragrance is always very fresh. It has to be fresh and clean as well. But at the same time, they want something that is a bit sensual as well. Smells have different meanings in different cultures. It's been an education for the Frenchman. Fruity notes, you know, they're not the same as in Europe, partly because you don't have the same fruits. We think in Europe vanilla is uh, very sweet and um, it's a heavy fragrance and so on. Here it's very often considered a fresh uh, fragrance. You have to adapt to uh, that type of uh, thinking. Okay. Mm. Thank you very much. Você uh, está com Okay, is with Kenzo Om. Well, I was certainly confused with the lavender, you know. When you come from Europe, you know, you think lavender is um, all for the old lady or it's a masculine fragrance. Here it's very much loved by feminine, by uh, women, actually. Actually, you wouldn't find that many fragrances with chocolate or coffee here. Uh, I think partly because, um, you know, they don't like to find on their skin something that they drink all the time, especially the coffee is very strong here. And coffee for them is cheap as well, okay? Uh, it's the same with orange, for instance. Brazil produces a lot of oranges. So if you have orange in a fragrance, this is something that is cheap. Você está muito perfumado, hein? É? Você está muito perfumado. Eu? É, que que perfume que é isso? Não sei, Fahrenheit. Ah, Fahrenheit, é. ok. This... What? To me, it's typically a mango smell, but um, for those who don't know, it's a bit peachy, apricot, that kind of fruit. You wouldn't use that in a perfume, would you? I would. I would, yeah. Not alone and not obviously mango. Bessard is concerned with public smells, but also private ones. 
His tireless pursuit of local knowledge takes him into people's homes to keep abreast of changing scent fashions. The next is social class C. Her name is Anna Celia. He and his colleague Flavia Motta make regular forays into the suburbs to scratch and sniff. She wears uh, lots of uh, local uh, brands. We must try to understand and, uh, better. How heavy user is she? Uh, like she um, wears fragrance every day, every seven day. days a week. Yes. And when asked to describe her favorite fragrance, she says, <laughs> funny, it smells like a rich lady. She, she wants to smell like a rich lady. Yes, mm. yeah. okay. it's inclusion, social class C. Yeah. Okay, this with the, uh, the lavender from Avon that she's using uh, a lot. And uh, she cannot be without it. It's very refreshing and it uh, really uh, makes you feel very clean. This one is uh, from Natura, it's pitanga. Pitanga is a local fruit. Uh, this, this one is an air freshener actually. This, this one is a pa passion flower, and uh, passion flower she likes better actually. This one is the one that she uses mostly at night. This, fra this fragrance is uh, what she calls uh, Cologne. Actually, they are baby fragrances originally, but. Uh, she likes them because it's, she said, well, it's, uh, it's, a <laughs> it, it's a good smell and she doesn't know how to explain it further. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> For now, Anna Celia's collection includes local products that nod to Western tastes, smells for the upwardly mobile. But for how long? Europe and the US still have a big influence on the uh, Brazilian perfumery. But I'm pretty sure that one day we're just going to see the reverse. In North London, the Brooks are looking to different horizons. They are preparing a nine bottle order for a client in the Middle East. Is it heavy? It is Do, why don't we just push this stuff out? Their scents are usually supplied in simple bottles, but there is something more exclusive available. We have one beautiful little buckle made from the original mould that the family commissioned nearly a hundred years ago. Mm. <laughs> I'll try and wrap it over the sofa. Mm. Hand cut and with pure gold as part of that etching process. Real gold. Real gold, pure gold. Each stopper is, is individual to the particular flacon. Let's put it in. And the way this is, you lock it by a quarter turn. I feel very proud uh, that we've, we've found the mould and um, proud of my ancestors for having the foresight to, um, <laughs> to, to commission one. So we're very, very lucky. So. This is for a special order. It's our first commercial order for a very special customer in the Middle East um, who's ordered nine of these. Uh, and who is that customer? Are you allowed to say? I'd rather not say. No, okay. no, no, no special people. Okay. It's going to a royal family in, uh, in the Middle East. This precious consignment is off to the airport, and so is Simon. There are rich pickings to be had in the Gulf, and a sales drive is in order. Bahrain is unexplored territory for Grossmith. Brooke flies in to launch his trio of Victorian beauties in the kind of place that inspired his ancestors, but which they never saw. No leakages, nothing broken, a few. <laughs> the launch party is at six o'clock tomorrow. Um, we have British ambassador, he's going to be there, and various VIPs, who, mm. they, they love the English in the Middle East. Darn hot, though. Mm. 
hot and very humid. The scents of Araby have to be strong to survive the climate, as the local competition knows very well. Sorry, I thought I have one dinner. No more one dinner. Finish. Yes, all Arabic people is taking this. Arabic people is one strong perfume. Princess. Very strong this one. Yeah. Arabic perfume, all this very strong. Yes. Our perfume, this all Arabic people, Indian people, all people is taking this perfume. Huh. Arabic is popular, this one. Silver drops. This for Arabic people is taking this. Very strong. Yeah. Bakhur, Bakhur. Perfume, genital firdos. This. G genital? Firdos, oil perfume, this one. Huh. Genital firdos, very old perfume, this one. Doing business on a new frontier, local knowledge is key. Brooke is joined by Syrian perfume entrepreneur Bashir Nasri, a man with connections. A friend of mine, Sheikh Mohammed Ashmawi, is a very wealthy man, 50% kerosene, British petroleum side of Arabia. Wow. And he loves perfume. Oh. He's one of the one who will buy your Bakara shoe. Is he really? One day, yes. Well, I can feel the glass is really, really hot. But uh, we haven't been outside long enough to really know what the, uh, the climate is like, I don't think. It's 126 degrees today. Uh-huh. Wow. That's uh, a record for me. Simon wants a local distributor, and Bashir takes him to meet the Al Hawaj family, perfume merchants across the Gulf. Perfume fragrance in the Middle East is their life. It's their life. A British lady mm -hmm. consume 100 ml in six months. Here, less than one week. I'm sure it, in few years, everybody will know about Grossmith. It's a pleasure to meet you. Hello. I brought some treasure to show you. So, Shemal Nassim is Arabic for I smelling the breeze, it. yes? Yeah. The best of English perfumery. Yes. You have to Hello. understand and know and respect the local ways of doing things. Oh, great to meet you. And you forget that at your peril. Yeah, we'll come back then. Thank you. Never had a date like this before. This is my new world, Ian. I love it. When you've got something as good as this, I mean, you can't. Where can you go wrong? Brooke is confident, but his sense will have to contend with sub zero air conditioning and summer temperatures around 140 degrees. The most exciting thing about Simon used to be a pink silk tie. Now he consorts with merchant princes and the kind of customers who can spend their days snoozing, parking and shopping in malls. The launch is to take place in an Al Hawaj perfumery. Grossmith, everywhere. Yes. Back at home, an event like this might pull in the squirearchy and a local beauty queen. Simon greets the British ambassador. Hello. Jamie, thank you very much indeed for coming along to this. I'm sort of getting used to this, Your Excellency, your honoured guests and friends in Bahrain. Friends, uh, thought about what my Grossmith ancestors would be thinking about all this, and I think they'd be absolutely delighted. They'd be even more pleased if they knew the identity of the next Grossmith customer. The morning after the night before, there's a call from the palace. A courtier wants to meet them at the Al Hawaj offices. The king, when he appoints a buyer, he will not appoint anybody. He will appoint really somebody who is an expert, keen to find for his majesty the fragrance which he loves. Because they know, they know about him. They know everything about their boss, their, the king, and they make the selection. This is the most. <clears throat> so there are, but the packaging, the presentation, everything is out.